We are wrapping up our section on government, on how our government works. And uh, the last thing we, we need to talk about is the electoral process. Now, there's a, there's a handout. Be sure that you print that out. And there's two big sections, well, three sections, I guess, on uh, the electoral process that we're going to cover. The, the first section is it has to do with the requirements to run for Congress and to run for president. Uh, for example, for Congress, you've got to be 25 years old. Uh, for Senate, you got to be 30 years old. Uh, for president, you got to be 35 years old, minimum age. Um, and then there's some, some, some uh, residency requirements and things like that. It's not going to do you any good for me to just read that to you. That is on the handout. You don't know if you're going to be asked about that, but you might be. So you're going to want to put that little bit of information to memory. The other part of this, uh, and part of that also is the requirements to vote. You know, you've got to be a citizen. You've got to be 18 years old. You've got to be registered. And um, you can't be a convicted felon, well, at least in most states, unless your voting rights have been restored. But that's just some basic factual information that's pretty easy to get a handle on. The part of this that can get a little bit complicated, that can get a little bit confusing, it has to do with the electoral college. And that's what I'm going to focus on in, um, in these two videos. The first one's going to be, what is the electoral college? Just how does it work? And the second one is, how does the electoral college change? I mean, the, the size, uh, the, the number of votes that a, a state can get, how does that change? How has that changed in the past? Um, so that's what this is going to be about, right? So let's start with the Electoral College, okay? How this works, what is it? What is the Electoral College? If you pay attention to presidential elections, you've undoubtedly heard about this because it's, it's all over the place, <laughs> meaning on the TV and what people are talking about. So I'm going to write, and elect, if I can find a marker that works, I'm going to write uh, electoral college. Now, it's a little bit misleading, that term electoral college is a little bit misleading because it's not a college. It's not anything like a college. It's not even a building and an organization where there's a set number of people, you know, somewhere, a body making a decision, you know, one body of people making a decision. That's not even it, right? But it, it has to do with how we vote for president. So we don't vote for president directly, right? We vote for representatives to Congress directly. We vote for uh, representatives and for senators directly. Now we do. We don't vote directly for president. There is a a uh, gap, if you will, there is a, there's an intermediary process. So there is a, so there's a popular vote, okay? So every four years we have an election for president and there's a popular vote. So this is, and, and, it, and look, we're talking about per state, okay? So in Texas and Arkansas, Oklahoma, and so forth. So per state, so this is, I'm just going to draw kind of a mass right here, all right? This is just supposed, this is the popular vote. This is what we do, you know, what people do, what citizens do when citizens go to the polls and vote. That's the caster vote for a candidate, okay? And um, there's usually, I mean, there's two, of course, but oftentimes there's more. There's, uh, you know, third-party candidates. So, popular vote, there's a cast for a candidate, right? Now, Someone's going to win that for a state. There's going to be a, uh, a winner, of course. And the U.S. has a winner-take-all right, system for the Electoral College. All right? So whoever wins this, so um, whoever wins this, let's say there's two candidates. Let's say that there's a Democrat and a Republican. I mean, there could be Green Party. There could be somebody else over here, an Independent, okay? Other political parties, but uh, we have, I'm just going to stick with the two big ones just to illustrate this point. Right? So we have uh, party number one, party number two, Democrat and Republican. I'm just going to put party number one, party number two. All right. And let's say that party number one wins the vote. Okay. Party number one wins the vote. I'm not going to get into if that's a Democrat or a Republican, but two parties. One of them wins the vote, 
all of the Electoral College votes, Electoral votes go to this candidate. This person receives zero electoral votes. So what does that mean? What is an electoral vote? Well, that's just people, just people who have committed in advance to voting for a particular candidate. Right? So if this was a Republican who won, this would be it would be people who have committed to voting for the Republican candidate, if that candidate wins. If it's a Democrat, then the electoral votes, they're just people. The electoral college, they're just people. It's just a group of people who have committed to voting for the Democrat, if it's a Democrat, right? If it's Republican, people say, I'm going to vote for the Republican, all right? If it's a Democrat, I'm going to vote for the Democrat, all right? The size, the number of votes, is determined by the number of representatives in Congress. That's the, the number of people in the House plus the Senate, all right? The number of people in the House plus two, all right? Two senators, okay? So it's determined by the number of representatives in Congress. And that is determined by the size of the state in terms of population, all right? Not the two senators. I mean, that's a constant but uh, the size, right? So in Texas, in 2016, there were 30 in Texas. In 2016, there were 38 electoral votes, okay? There were 38 electoral votes in 2016. So the winner in Texas in 2016, in that case was President Trump, he won all 38 of the electoral votes. If Hillary Clinton had won Texas, then she would have won the 38 electoral votes. Now, as it was, she didn't win, so she got zero electoral votes, all right? And the next presidential election, who, whoever wins Texas, right, whoever wins will get the, if it's still 38, those 38 electoral votes, okay? Now, how many votes do you need? Well, you need 270, okay? So there's, you need 270 to win, and that's a 538, right? So if there's 538 total electoral votes. So if you look at California, there's 50, 55 electoral votes. Uh, Alabama gets nine, you know, in the bottom, nine or 10 or seven or something like that. And uh, New York, it's probably... Uh, 35 or something like that. Florida gets 20 something. Not exactly sure. I haven't looked that up. Because you're not going to get asked about how many votes per state, but you might get asked how it works. All right. So let's backtrack. We'll repeat ourselves a little bit. Electoral College, there's a popular vote per state. Whoever wins the popular vote in the state, 51% or more, 50.1%, I guess, right? Whoever wins that gets all of these votes in the electoral votes are just people who've committed to voting for that person. Does it ever happen that electors change their minds? Yes. I mean, there's no law that says they have to do this. They don't have to. So it's theoretically possible for every single elector to say, oh yeah, I'm going to vote for the Democrat. And then they don't vote for the Democrat. They vote for Independent or Republican or somebody else. That doesn't happen so that they all do that. It does happen sometimes that one or two might. But it is, has not been enough to change the outcome of an election, right? Just interesting little bit of trivia there. So, if you've heard people talk about it, you need 270. So you need 270 electoral votes. So you add up the electoral votes from state to state to state. Whoever hits 270 is the winner of the election, okay? That's how the electoral college works. And um, how does this how does this change? This is going to be our next question. Does this uh, does it ever change the size, the makeup of the electoral college, the number of votes per state, the number of total votes, right? Things like that. Okay, that's going to be the topic of our next video. So let's go ahead and go there.